Dr. Forsman, when you see a patient in your clinic and you think they may have chronic pancreatitis, what's your approach? What do you like to do? Well, the, the first step is really just trying to make sure that they actually do have chronic pancreatitis and not some other condition. So uh, at the beginning, usually, uh, we're having the patient undergo some kind of x-ray test like a CAT scan or an MRI that looks at the pancreas. And that helps us both identify whether there are uh, changes in the pancreas that look like chronic pancreatitis or not. And it also helps us in determining how advanced the disease may be, because as patients have chronic pancreatitis for longer periods of time, the pancreas gradually begins to look worse and worse on a CAT scan or an MRI. So the, these x-ray studies help us not only in making an accurate diagnosis, which we want to do, but also in determining how far advanced the disease is. And there are a variety of other tests that uh, uh, patients may be, uh, might undergo. Uh, there are endoscopic tests, for instance, to study the pancreas. But those are all tests which are looking at sort of how the pancreas looks, the structure of the pancreas. We also might do some tests to measure how well the pancreas is working, that is its function. So we might be checking to see whether the pancreas is making enough digestive enzymes for normal nutrition. That might be through a stool test. We might be checking whether patients have become deficient in vitamins. That might be a blood test. And we might be checking whether patients are becoming diabetic, again, a blood test. So it's a combination really of uh, usually uh, x-ray tests to look at the pancreas and then test to try to measure how well the pancreas is doing. And all that's put together to try to come up with uh, uh, both an accurate diagnosis to make sure that it really is chronic pancreatitis, but also some, some initial assessment of how severe the condition is, how far advanced it is. Thank you. And I would like to add also that uh, the, the part that goes along with the symptoms it's very important, and, and as you have said before, and we have said before as well, uh, the, the clinical history is super important. So we really need to spend a good amount of time with our patients, getting a good history, a detailed history, to go back in time and see really when this happens. And again, as you just mentioned, reviewing all the available data, imaging, labs, and so, it's gonna be key in making the final diagnosis. And I would just say it's really important um, for patients to communicate with their doctors about their symptoms. So, um, you know, it's maybe easy to talk about abdominal pain, but it's a little more difficult to talk about your bowel movements and whether there's something abnormal there that might suggest that your pancreas is not making enough digestive enzymes. So uh, please don't be embarrassed when you're seeing somebody when they're asking these questions, but give a, the best um, answers you can as to um, what's happening uh, not only with your with pain if it's present, but with uh, bowel movements as well, because that's really helpful for us to figuring out whether we might need a, to think about a specific treatment. That's a very good point. And I always like to tell patients, pictures are always welcome. <laughs>